Hey everyone, today I'm going to show you how to install the Racetech Adventure shock spring on your Yamaha T7. Now if you have one of these bikes, you probably already know, they come with some pretty soft springs both for the forks and the shock. We're doing separate videos on these items and we've made it easy. You can head over to our website and get the correct spring for your bike. You just want to type in your weight and it's going to give you the right one. Now with this, I do want to point out, this says Eibach right on it, but this is a Racetech part number. So yes, you're getting the right part if you get one of these. Now, with all that being said, it's a pretty simple install. Almost anyone can do it. Let's go ahead and get started. To start out, we need to unload that rear shock. So I've got this Drag Specialties scissor jack. It's gonna raise the machine up and hold it securely. I also have the front end tied down just to be safe, but whatever you use, make sure the bike is secure. And we're just going until the back wheel almost comes off the ground. And then from here, we can remove two plastic covers on each side. We're using an eight millimeter T-handle for that. We also have that tab and grommet you need to release. Next, I'm gonna remove the upper shock nut with a 17 millimeter socket. Then we're gonna use a 17 millimeter combo wrench and 14 millimeter socket to remove the lower shock bolt and nut. Next, we're gonna remove the side cover on the other side. Then we'll use a six millimeter Allen to remove the passenger foot peg. After that, you can use your jack to gain some clearance and that's gonna allow you to be able to remove that upper shock mounting bolt and pull the shock out from the left side of the bike. Now I'm gonna press the upper shock mounting bolt out with my finger. That's gonna allow me to rock the shock back and out. Just turn it just like that, comes right out. Now with the shock over at the bench, we have a vise with soft jaws. If you don't have one of these, that's fine. You can just do this on the bench and use the two spring compressors the same way we are gonna use them. Having a vise just makes it a little bit easier. So with this, I do wanna mention, I've gone ahead and measured this spring. I like to just do this in millimeters. So I've got 229 millimeters of compressed length. After that, you can remove the preload from this adjuster. And to start out, I'll just put it back where it was to begin with. So I've counted the turns, I've backed this off 12 full revolutions and that's going to help it be easier to remove that spring. Now with that being said, we'll talk about preload and all that kind of stuff as we go together. So I'm going to go ahead and take these spring compressors. You want to start with them all the way apart so you get the maximum number of coils in there. We'll place one on each side. And then you wanna tighten them as evenly as possible. And then once we have it compressed far enough and have some play, we can remove a retainer from the bottom. So once you have the spring tight enough to have some free play, what you wanna do is move everything towards the top and I've got the bumper at the bottom. I wanna raise that up just a little bit. Get that out of the way. And then we've got a retainer. So all we need to do now, rotate this. You can see we have that open end. So that's gonna be pushed up and then pulled out. And that open end just allows it to go around that shock shaft. And then from here, what we can do is loosen these up on the spring. Now for the new spring, you will need these adapters. So make sure you get these installed, one on each end. Then I'm gonna slide the new spring on. And I'm gonna bring this back over to the vise and I'm gonna clamp it again so we have enough room that we can install that retainer once the spring is compressed. Now before I compress this new spring, I wanna measure the free length. So I'm 229 millimeters. Now Racetech recommends starting out with 10 millimeters of preload. 
So once we have everything installed, that's what we'll crank it down to. Now we're gonna compress the spring the same way we did on the old one. Then once you have the spring compressed far enough, you can install the retainer. Set that down into place. Make sure it's fully seated and make sure the, that collar, the adapter that you had, make sure that's seated as well. Then we're pushing down the bumper and we're gonna slowly release the tension off this spring and make sure you're lined up on this preload adjuster. Now that we have the spring compressors removed, you wanna make sure that the eyelet is lined up with the clevis. So when you go to install this, everything is gonna be ready to go. So we have both mounting holes going in the same direction. And then from here, we need to set our preload. So I'm gonna take another measurement and see where we're at with that spring. And then again, I'm gonna turn this adjuster in until I've got the spring compressed 10 millimeters. That's 219 right there. So we've got the correct preload. Now all we need to do is reinstall this onto the bike and we're just gonna double check the sag and make sure we're pretty close to that 66 millimeter mark. Now for the mounting bolt, I'm gonna apply just a little bit of grease to prevent corrosion. We'll set the upper mounting bolt in place. There's a bracket on the other side. You're gonna to have to make sure you're lined up there. So we're looking pretty good. Now we can lower the jack down just a little bit until we can install that lower shock mounting bolt. I'm lined up perfect right there. I'm doing the same thing with the bolt, applying just a little bit of grease. Slide it through and then we can install the nuts. Both of these are gonna to get torqued to 33 foot-pounds. Then from here, we'll reinstall the side covers. Make sure you line up the grommet and tighten down the three bolts. Then we're gonna do the same thing on the other side and install that passenger peg. So now that we have everything done, we need to check the sag. And to do that, we're gonna start out by measuring the free length. I've got the rear wheel off the ground. I'm gonna take my measuring tape and go from the swing arm pivot right in the middle all the way to the axle. And in the center of that axle, I'm gonna transfer that measurement to the side of the bike. And that's gonna be where you wanna measure your free length from. So center of your axle, to that mark on the side of the bike. Now you can do that either with a tape measure, but the most accurate and easiest way is to do that with a sag scale. So with this, you can adjust the length of this and we're just gonna put that cone piece in the center of the axle and then zero this out. Right on our mark right there and then the next step would be to take this off the stand. We're gonna have someone sit on it and it's always a good idea if they're geared up and if you have any luggage you're gonna be taking, do this measurement with all that on there. But as soon as they sit on it, you're gonna be looking for that 66 millimeters of sag. And that's it for installing the Racetech Adventure shock spring on your Yamaha T7. If you need one of these springs, they're available on our website, so go check that out. It's a great way to get the correct spring for your weight range. Again, we've made it easy. You just have a drop down menu and select what you need. You can click the link in the description below. That's gonna take you over there. We offer free shipping on orders over $75. So take advantage of that. And if you wanna see more helpful content like this, make sure you subscribe to our channel. And for any questions, leave those down in the comments. I'm Charles with Rocky Mountain ATVMC. Thanks for watching.